So welcome back to another video and I'm going to do something that I said I wouldn't do, but sometimes I see things and I just have to talk about them or think about the idea of lying about them for profit. And this is what's wrong with gaming in general when it comes to social media. As soon as money and videos and influencers became a thing, as if that is a noble uh, profession or it's a profession that anybody would want to do. Um, as soon as that became something that took over gaming, as soon as that became something that most of you look for, you look for those people who are the Xbox people or the PlayStation people with tons of followers and they must know what they're talking about because look at all the people that are following them. Phil Spencer's retweeting them or someone else. And the reason why you don't see videos like the one I'm making here is because nobody wants to tell you the truth. Because if they did, they would lose the following, they would lose the influence, they would lose the free stuff that they get, they would lose the quote unquote jobs that they might be getting at these companies. But the bottom line is, this idea that if you subscribe to Game Pass or you subscribe to PlayStation Plus Extra or Premium, it's really this noble offering. And let's just take Game Pass because I saw a tweet from somebody and I'm not gonna mention who they are. It showed up on my timeline. There's somebody who makes videos that has a following and is kind of Xbox centric, but pretends not to be, said that Xbox wants their games to be experienced by everyone. And Sony wants that too. And the only people that don't want that are toxic fanboys, you know, people who are who are online just spewing toxicity all the time. They're open, they're open about it, they're honest about it. Not like the influencers who are just so noble in the way they say things. Like, we wanna reach all of these people. Why would you be against that? Here's the truth of the matter. Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, they make a physical box, a console. In order to get you to purchase that physical box, they make games to go along with that physical box, first party games that are exclusive to the box to get you to purchase it. That's somehow a bad thing. It limits who can experience these games. Why would we wanna limit people? Look at Game Pass, it's freeing so many people. Look at PlayStation Plus Premium, Extra and Essential. It's going to, Extra and Premium, I'm sorry. It's going to free people, a service is the same as a product. You just can't see it. You can't touch it. You can't feel it. It doesn't come in a box. You don't unwrap it. You don't put it under your television set and connect an HDMI cable to it. That's the difference. There is no difference. You're still locked into PlayStation's service or Microsoft's service, period. The same limitations are there. The same limitations that everyone's preaching will go away if we just subscribe to Game Pass or PlayStation Extra and Premium and they let those games go everywhere. Well, how could that be a bad thing? It's total freedom. They care about you. They're letting you subscribe to Game Pass and you can play it on an Xbox, but you're not locked to that physical product, that yucky box that you have to be tied to. You can play those games on your iPad or your phone or your refrigerator. However, you're stuck with Game Pass. You're in that service. The service is a box. You just can't see it. It's the same sentiment. It is the exact same strategy. All it does is allow the companies to reach more people while at the same time maintaining that control that they had over you when you bought that physical box because there's nothing wrong with making a physical box. There's nothing wrong with making games exclusive to your physical box especially if those games are being made by your employees who work for your company that made that specific box. But if you remove the box, somehow that's virtuous. Somehow you're reaching more people. Making a physical console, selling it, 
using exclusives to get people to buy it is the exact same strategy as creating a service and creating exclusive content or buying studios to make exclusive content for that service to get people locked into it. And then you tell them, but look at the freedom you have. Now you can play that game on the go. You can play it in your hotel room. You can play it on the console, pick it up on the toilet, and then go to sleep and play it on your phone. Isn't it amazing how much we love you and we want you to own the things that you purchase and play them where you want with who you want at any time. However, you must be locked in to our Xbox or PlayStation service. We replaced locked into the console, the physical product, with the same sentiment being locked into the service. Even though you can't see it, you can't touch it, it must be great because I'm free of that box. You're not free, you're locked in. It's the same thing. At the end of the day, this virtue signaling for Game Pass or PlayStation or services in general mean absolutely nothing. It always comes back to content. It comes back to games. What games are you playing? Are they good? Do they define their respective genres? Are they the best action adventures? Are they the best RPGs? Are they the best first person shooters? Because convincing anybody that somehow owning a physical box and being tied to it is bad, but being locked into a service perpetually Paying every single month is freedom is insane. And the only people peddling that are the same people that want you to like and subscribe over and over and over again, pay for their Patreons, pay to ask questions the same way that these companies want you to pay every single month for that freedom that you have from that disgusting box that just ties you down and weighs you down. The old way of thinking. If Microsoft or Sony really cared, really wanted everyone to play their games, then they would just go third party and put their games everywhere. But they don't, and that's fine, because businesses are allowed to create products and services, and they're allowed to incentivize people to buy them over other products and services. Give me a break with the virtue signaling for Game Pass or PlayStation, because at the end of the day, it is the exact same sentiment as buying a box and being tied to that box for exclusive content. The illusion of freedom is being able to play those games anywhere as long as that little Game Pass app exists on that device or that PlayStation app exists on that device. Thanks for watching the video. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. I'll see you in the next one.